We look at called Memento Mori, which is remember mortality, um, specifically your own mortality and the mortality of you know everything around you, everything that comes to an end. Um, but in all that, you know, there there's still purpose in life. There's meaning in life. You know, and because our time's so short and, and, and it comes to an end, you know, we, we need to take advantage of the time we have now um, to live the lives that we always dreamed of living. You know, not not in a uh, you know, eat, drink, and be merry, and forget about everyone else kind of way, but in, in a way that's, that really shows love, you know, and, and really leaving this place better than you, than you came into it. The phrase memento mori comes from uh, the story that in ancient Roman times there was a victorious warrior, often a king or, or whoever, that would come back from battle, and they would have a big parade for the victor and behind the, the the victorious warrior or the king would a slave would travel behind him saying the phrase memento mori remember your mortality remember your death today you're on top but tomorrow's another day your fate is the same as mine and um, and just kind of in a way to make sure that he was humbled enough to recognize where he came from and who he really is you know, in the face of all the cheering and and uh, and the shouting, it can sometimes give you a false understanding of who you are. You know, the vision we have for this record and, and the whole look and feel of it. You know, we, we want it to be timeless um, because the the theme of Mentor Mori is a, is a timeless theme. You know, it's the message of mortality. You know, it's it's everything comes to an end, and no matter what generation you're from, no matter where you are who you are, you know, you're going to die. And, that, and that, that's something that, that unites us all, is, is our mortality you know, and our flaws. And it's kind of a phrase that we would say over ourselves. You know, um, we sold a million something records last time. And I think that the point is, you know, when we go on stage and people are chanting Flyleaf and people are chanting, you know, it's like a parade. We're like kings in a way. and but we are no better than anyone else. We had amazing things happen and, and we acknowledge that it was miraculous, but it's not that we're, I don't think, I don't believe it's because we're any better than anyone. I think that it's, it's just an amazing thing. We acknowledge that. We, we know that it could all end tomorrow, so the point is to really appreciate, appreciate um, every day and everything that comes it was a lot different working with Howard on the second on this record, Momentum Mori, because um, I think we had to put the songs together in a shorter amount of time. They they were written over a, a couple years, but we did real strict arrangements, um, which I guess we came into more experienced and with more of a vision of what Howard might want or what kind of ends up being after something gets pr produced and so it, it cut out a lot of time for us to go ahead and prepare the songs that way. It, it just came natural though, it's not like we tried to you know piece songs together the way commercially acceptable but I think um, it was a lot smoother process working with Howard this time. For me I like bands that have something that they believe in regardless of what it is and the fact that they believe in something so strongly is very attractive to me. What about the the the, the, the low res delay? With the um I like that delay. But it's pretty it's really mono. Well it's a mono delay. There's only there's only the only thing that's stereo on this is actually when you get a stereo delay. Oh really? Can you put one delay on one side, another delay on another end? Can can you break up I that? Use a different delay for the other end. Yeah, use a different delay for the other end. Okay. Yeah, can do that. Sure. So this is just going on one amp right now, or is it going on both? It's going on both right now. Yeah, just put that on one, and let's put another one and another one. Sweet.
on the island with the daughters of Eve. But through thick and thin they've gone away and only left their grave. Oh, something's missing in me. <laughs> I ran out of breath. I uh, was brought in to produce their first album, and um, I didn't really know anything about the band. Actually, my first um, contact with them was when I uh, got a call f uh, from Lacey, or I called her, and it was definitely a cultural clash because um, I'm very I'm a Jewish, you know, uh, guy from Philadelphia by way of L.A., and she's obviously absolutely not Jewish. It wasn't confrontational, but it was it was very, um, we agreed to disagree, but we also knew that we really enjoyed talking to each other and throwing ideas around and talking about the world and the universe and whether God exists and all that. And I think in some ways, um, it was a good match for them to have somebody who, uh, you know, believes like I believe to produce them. We agreed to make a record together, and uh, I told her flat out that I was going to, uh, you know, push to make it very commercial and you know do my job and I asked her if she wanted to be a rock star and then she said no and I said too bad because you're going to be one so get ready anyway I love working with them they're definitely a um, I don't know how to put it they're a feel band it's all about feel it's all about the vibe it's all about you know whether it's good for their message or not there's an inner workings of this band that that has to do its thing for the rec the songs to be acceptable what the fans can expect for the new record, I mean, new, new songs, obviously. I think that the sound, we've we've grown a lot as as musicians, as musicians and songwriters. I think learned a lot um, about songwriting, a lot about ourselves. We, we've done a lot of growing up in the past four years. You know, I think a lot of that comes out in in our songs. It, a lot of it's going to come out in uh, in what you hear in the lyrics. Um, a lot of you know real life experiences. A lot of uh, um, honesty, you know, and, and, and a lot of hope. I think naturally the band is more seasoned, so you have a much tighter uh, sounding band. I think on every instrument they're a lot more, um, you know, uh, comfortable with their instruments. And I think lyrically, um, it's the it's going to take no prisoners, this, this uh, record. It's going to be what they are on a, on, with no apologies. Recording again with Howard Benson, Memento Mori was uh, it was very very good. I would say um, this time we had the advantage of not being so green, not being so uh, just new to being a band in general, and uh, a lot of time passed. You know, about five years since the first recording with Howard, and and uh, and we had familiarity and rapport with Howard and his team, and some of the same issues we had last time we had, but they were just like very. Uh, very shrunken, you know, or just any any kind of the the red light fright, you know, as you say when you get freaked out having to record something kind of like I am right now. But um, you, you know that that was not so bad this time, and it was it was more enjoyable, I would say. It's a it's a you know it's like any good producer in a band. You you just are gonna you gonna lock heads sometimes and lock horns, and we definitely have on this record, you know, not badly, but in a good way. The whole team uh, that we worked with last time was great. Uh, I think it was really productive, and um, I think he kind of understood us more this time. And uh, it seemed to the recording process seemed a lot smoother, and uh, we got everything done quickly whenever we recorded. Uh, to be back in the studio, it, it feels um, a lot freer this time. I must say. Um, I don't know, getting back to working with Howard and, and his team, uh, Mike Plotnikoff, Paul DeCarly, 
and uh, a couple new additions. It's just been really good. I don't know. I guess that familiarity kind of shaved some of the fear off of, oh, oh crap, this is a big deal, you know. And, and um, So it's, it's been good. 